What's up guys, Marks here, Everything Tenray. Today we're gonna talk about my ADV camping gear and it's a lot on the table right now and uh, we're gonna go through it because it's some of the things here are duplicates or we have two sleeping bags, we have two uh, sleeping mattresses and uh, so on. So we, I will talk about the difference and when I will use what and what I have depending on what kind of ride I do, multi-day camping or just one day and you know, season, all that and all the different crap I bring with me. And of course, any additions or things that is not here on the table, I'll talk about that too. So stay tuned. So here we have everything on the table and it's hard to see what everything is. So I will just bring everything off or take everything off the table and show you one thing at one time and what we end up with, all right? So let's start with the essential things first. And one of the most important things is the tent, right? Especially camping, you maybe want a tent. And here I got a Hilleberg. So this is a Swedish tent maker, really famous one super high quality so this is a one-man tent so this is the Hilleberg Unna so U-N-N-A it's a one-person uh, dome type tent for all season uh, as I said this really high quality one it's about 2.4 or 2.6 kilos I don't really remember exactly the specs of it but it's a really pricey tent and uh, in the next ADV trip I do this weekend I will talk more about my background as a you know outdoors person so so this is my tent I actually have one more a different uh, Steika tent from Hilleberg as well which is not a, uh, a dome type tent but it's a different one it weighs a little bit more but it is might be a bit more comfy as it has a bigger um, Upside or whatever you call it like a, a space outside the living quarters where you can actually store things cook food whatnot so so this is my tent so Hilleberg Unna really good tent and if you want a really high quality tent you should check uh, Hilleberg out but uh, you might need to cough up a lot of buckles for it then we come to the sleeping bag department I actually have, I think, four or five different sleeping bags, but these are the more compact ones. I also have a, a really cold weather sleeping bag, which is rated to, I think, in minus 20 or minus 25. It's bigger, of course, so it's nothing that I really would bring on, a, <laughs> on an ADV camping trip because it, I'm not going to ride when it's minus 20 anyways. So I have a summer uh, bag. This is a uh, Hagelöfs. It's also a Swedish brand. So pretty famous, make a lot of outdoor stuff. So here's a little bit lighter uh, sleeping bag. So it's called Eurolite. So this is more of a summer type sleeping bag because it's like comfortable level down to 11 degrees. At the moment here in Sweden, it's everything between zero and plus 10. Uh, around five degrees maybe uh, at the moment and um, so it's you know a bit too cold to have that sleeping bag so right now i would choose this one also the hilleberg one but it's a sensor pro 3 so it's comfortable to plus one but it is also okay all the way down to minus 14. of course when you are in a sleeping bag when it's cold weather you will always need to maybe have a, a layer on yourself as, as well, like a tight layer on you. Uh, I usually have a, also a, what do you call, like a inner bag in my sleeping bag, like a cotton kind of inner bag, so you don't get the sleeping bag all sweaty and dirty and whatnot. So that's a really good tip as well, to have like a, a liner in your sleeping bag uh, to sleep in as well. After the sleeping bags, we go to the sleeping mattress. Uh, 
I have several of those, but the two ones, the two different ones that I will use on my camping trips is, it's either this one from Tang World. So this is an ultra light sleeping bag, I mean sleeping mattress. It's very compact, and very small, but the downside is that it's very thin. It's okay to lay on the, my floor here. I have tested it out. But you know that out in the field, out on you know the spots you select to put your tent on and so on, you might not have soft ground. It might be some rocks and stuff and ruts or roots. Uh, so it's not the most comfortable thing. But if I'm in a pinch and I want a minimized uh, luggage, then I will select this one and I you know, have to suffer the consequences. So for colder temperatures, uh, maybe spring and autumn or winter as it's uh, you know autumn now you want something thicker to insulate you from the ground and it's also a lot more comfortable then I go for uh, the the Exped uh, down mat 7 DLX it's this one so this is a really good thick one you can see a picture uh, down here uh, it also in the pouch itself it has a built-in like an air pump so you have a, like a little snorkel here uh, so you can actually fill the, the bag with air quicker and very easy uh, it's not the self-inflating one it has two vents on it on each side in the bottom uh, it's really good and with this one as well if you want to do uh, ADV camping uh, like business class uh, it's nice to have a share. Uh, I know that's not necessary, but if you want to sit at a campfire and you don't have any logs to sit on or anything, you know, it, it's good to have a share and you want to have an ultra light share. With the, with the X, XPED series of sleeping bags, I mean sleeping mattresses, you also can get this. And it's very, very lightweight. It's like 400 grams. And it's the XPED uh, Share Kit L. And this is really smart. You use this together with your mattress. You insert the mattress in this one and then you can like fold it up into a share and also fold it in either. So you have a good, you know, uh, mattress for your complete legs sitting on a flat, flat ground, but you can also fold that in. So it's just a thick, thick cushion under your bottom so you can see a picture of that one mounted here as well so this one you know it doesn't take a lot of size I mean it's not bulky it's very you know it's an oversized bag I don't know why uh, and it's about the same length at my tent as my tent poles and I usually try to keep my tent poles outside the tent bag and uh, my idea now is to put the poles in this one as well. I have this on my top bag uh, on top of the bike. And you will see the complete packing later on when I go for my, my, my bike trip, right? So that, uh, that's good. And uh, let's move to the cooking utensils and uh, the different options I have. So I... As I said, I have been brought up in a outdoors type of family, so I have so many different things, but I try to use the best and the most simple and compact things that I got. And I have two options. Either I go with gas or I could with, go with a wood fire. So if we start off with my gas type of cooking this is my my primus uh, primus spider stove set it's all you know disassembled right now so you can see how it looks so it's a very simple one with a with a burner of course so this covers everything you have a lid for it I got a gas bottle, these come in different sizes. This is a small one, but it's, it's actually very, you know, it lasts a long time. 
It has, a, you know, in this bag, you also have like a lighter that make a spark. You have a eating cup or whatnot, whatever you want to call it, a bowl. And you have everything in a good small package. I can fold it together, put everything in here. I can actually also fit this one in it if I want, but I used to, you know, have it on the outside. And it goes down to a pretty small package. Uh, a jet boil might be smaller, which is good. This one is a maybe, you know, too big, but it's fine. So this is my gas cooking options. If I know that it will not be super wet weather and it will be dry conditions, maybe in the summer and so on, and I anyways will do a campfire, uh, I always have the option to bring my campfire kit. So I have a, lit a little, you know, coffee pot, which I can store a lot of things in as well. Same goes for that one. And I have um, another pot that I can put on direct fire. And this is an aluminium one. And if you have a stainless steel, you know, that is usually much better because it will last longer. Uh, I always have one of these so I can pick it up. But I also have this little thing. So this is an ember light. So it's a little Lego stove so I can put together and it's super nice to have actually. I usually bring this on small hikes. I put it together, you just put a few branches in there, small one, and uh, it's enough to uh, cook the water in this very, very quickly. So that's one option I have when going minimalized and not having a, a gas cooker with me. Uh, and of course, I could just bring this and this. That's enough. I can do everything on that one. Uh, this one I bring because it's very easy to put straight on the fire. Uh, remember, if you buy these, they usually come with rubber uh, like a rubber thing or plastic thing around the handle and the top lid here. Make sure that you remove that before if you're going to use it on direct fire because it will melt. And I learned the lesson the hard way. It's melted off on this one. But this is a good option for cooking food. So check out Amber uh, Light. I think it's Amber Light. I can put a link up uh, up here. So you can see how it looks. Then, of course, I have a little, as we call it, a kosa in Swedish, a kosa to drink from. I always bring this. This is just for, you know, when barbecuing hot dogs or whatnot over open fire. It's easy. Just put the stick in th through here and let go and it will uh, be a nice way to hold your hot dog in. And I always have, uh, what do you call it, a lighter or a lightning rod. You know, matches in a watertight container as well. Uh, of course, I bring uh, coffee, uh, tea, as I had here, uh, sugar, salt, uh, pepper in like tiny com uh, containers. Uh, and I also use, as I'm a Swede, I actually do use snooze. So this is actually an old snooze box which I have a small little uh, sponge in, which is pre-prepped with dish uh, washing soap. So it's easy for me to just keep that and clean it. It also have a extra compartment here with an old chewing gum in I saw now. <laughs> um, I always have a lighter in my backpack, so that's okay. But I can manage without the lighter. I have matches, that's no worries. You know, a spork uh, and maybe a plastic fork and knife as well. I always bring a separate water bladder. Uh, I like this one because you can open it up. Uh, it's not like the camel, uh, camel back one. Hello, come off. So it's easier to fill and empty out and dry out when, when you need to dry it out than the camel back water bladder. I have a camel back in my backpack so I, uh, I usually have a backpack on as well, all depends on, or just a 
separate water blood uh, a water bottle that I have easy access to. So this one is somewhere in my my you know Enduristan bags. Here's my water bottle that I usually bring with me. It's easy. I can clip it to anything. And to the cooking department, we also get to uh, you know always a Mura 2000 knife. Good to have. I can. It's pretty you know chunky. I can bash on it. I don't bring an axe because it weighs a lot. I have a handheld saw. Nice to have. That's that's the only thing I need. Of course, I have a Leatherman under my seat as well, so I can use that. I always bring some fat wood. So this I harvest myself from a stump in the woods here. So I have plenty of fat wood and I just throw one piece down there in the bag. I can use, you don't need to use a lot, but it's really easy to start a fire with it. It burns really slow and uh, like oily and whatnot. So it's a really good fire starter. Always bring some headlights or uh, what do you call them? But I have two spare batteries. Toiletries. This is just have a toilet paper, some uh, wipes and a toothbrush. I don't bother with toothpaste paste when I'm out there. Uh, if I have a small little toothpaste bottle, yeah, I'll bring that. Then of course, like traveling kit with soap and whatnot, it all depends on how, how long are you gonna, you know, stay out for, right? Depending on season, you know, right now, I will always bring my military uh, style uh, rain jacket. Doesn't matter if I have a Gore-Tex, uh, you know, if I wear my Gore-Tex gear, I will always have this because I might not want to have my my Gore-Tex jacket on because it's heavy and it's not as as comfy. Then I have uh, additional clothes with me, of course, and uh, I'll either bring this one, which is a really good one, it's quite long, or if it's summertime and very nice weather, I can just take one of these, you know, multi-use, cheap as ponchos, uh, which is take up no space at all. So that's also a minimalistic kind of kind of way to do it. And, and of course, always a Swedish, uh, what we call a plunta, uh, with some, some uh, nice rum in it. So this, I think it's, uh, this is plantation or, I don't remember which one it is. Nice, nice good rum to have. Food wise, this all depends on, right? If I'm gonna be on a multi-day trip, uh, which is out there, you don't have access to sh stores and shops, then I might bring a lot of, you know, the freeze dry stuff. Otherwise, if it's just a one day thing or so on, I take a canned food or fresh food and, and just bring that what I need. And of course, coffee and tea, as I said, coffee, I try to take normal coffee. I bring a few coffee filters. I just vacuum pack portion sizes uh, with regular, you know, coffee. So, or get the freeze dried one, doesn't matter really. When it comes to the clothes department, depending on season, I'll bring uh, thicker layers that I can have underneath. Uh, you know, always a pair of extra socks. Uh, some plastic bags, which is really good to have. Uh, you know, if you really get wet or your boots get wet, you know, take a new fresh pair of socks, put the plastic back over over that, and then you put your feet in the in the in the boots, and you will not get cold. So that's you know super important in my mind to uh, you know stay away from freezing. Same with gloves, right? Always have some uh, extra gloves in in your gear or in your your bags. I usually try to get one of those type of working gloves that you can get at you know any store hardware store because insulated ones uh, and they do not you know tear or break when you're setting up camp collecting firewood uh, and so on and a beanie of course I use a beanie when I ride so I'll have that as well so this is pretty much the basic stuff I use uh, and we're gonna test this out this weekend uh, it's gonna be cold I don't care we're gonna find a place I already found a place to go 
test my gear out, test my tent out and so on, uh, because it will actually be the first time I do ADV camping. Jesus Christ. So we need to test it out. You know, I'm no newcomer to, uh, newcomer to camping at all or hiking. I've done it all my life. And really, you know, being away for 10 days or whatnot, hiking up in, in the Swedish national parks in, in Sarek, up in Lapland, you know, checking out wildlife, have no access to any store, only, you know, a shopper or a plane ride out to a lake and then just walking back, right? So I can do this for sure. So stay tuned for the next video uh, because we will be packing all the bags, see how everything looks. You will see my setup up ready and uh, catch you later at the campsite. So stay safe, guys. Take care. Cheerios. Bye-bye.